Hey guys, this is Adam with Tech Like a Boss. And today in this video, we're going to be talking about the latest version of Windows 10 21H1. Look here at my PC name. You will see that I have Windows 10 21H1 on this machine. And I'm going to go over just a couple things um, that they put into this update, and then also a couple things that are in um, a couple of the recent versions of Windows 10 that you might not be aware of. Um, just a couple interesting things. So let's dig on into it. Um, the first thing that really appears that has been around for one or two versions now that's interesting is this news and weather widget. And it appears at the bottom at the taskbar over by the icons. And if you hover over it or if you click it, you'll see a um, window that comes up and it'll have your weather in the top left and you can edit that um, to a different location if you want. You can also do the um, three ellipses there and you can hide it if you want, or there's more settings. Um, on the right, you have your stock widget, which is um, just um, the most recent stock information. You can change your watch list and have different um, tickers that you are looking at there and you can move over and see more on the market um, and then of course you can also hide this one if you want um, or you can have a more settings section there and then below that you have sports and then top stories and then traffic traffic is going to be based on your current location obviously every time you update your location um, it will change the traffic information there and you'll notice when you tap on this, it'll take you into MSN because, of course, this is Microsoft and Windows. So everything this is going to link to is going to be a Microsoft product. So in this case, it's the MSN maps. If you click on the weather, it'll open up uh, weather information as well to see a full forecast. Um, if you click on um, here, like, for example, the... Um, sports you'll see microsoft sports um, and it'll just show you whatever you need there um, if i go back here and see top stories you see this is from the hill new york times associated press you can uh, edit these a little bit uh, but not a whole lot you, you know this is like yes no the whole social media style like these kind don't like these kind of stories hide this particular story hide stories from the hill completely um, and then you keep going down it's just more news and then you can click even more news there, and that, of course, will come up some more MSN stuff. Now, it says, if you go back down here to the widget, um, over here in the top ellipsis in the corner, it says you can um, manage your interests. Um, now, to do that, of course, you have to be linked with a Microsoft account. I created this account uh, just to show you in this video. But the thing is, when you open this up and you try to edit this page here, which this page is considered uh, your personalized page. And so let's say I go down here to um, my local area, you know, Los Angeles. I click the ellipsis here, and right now it says new personalization options coming soon. Stay tuned. So actually, I cannot modify anything in it yet. It's still a pretty new feature. They haven't rolled out the whole thing yet. So uh, that part of it, at least, is not able uh, to be messed with at the moment. But you can change your language content, tips and tricks, all that right there. Uh, so that is the weather and news widget that comes in uh, 21H1 and will definitely be there for 21H2 and beyond. Um, it seems to be pretty popular with people um, having things at their fingertips. It's kind of like having, you know, your weather widget on your smartphone or whatever. Um, so anyway, that's there. Um, that's kind of cool. All right, the next thing I want to talk about, it has been around for at least one other version of Windows 10, and that is the Chromium Edge Browser. And what I mean by that is just the Edge browser, but it's a new type of Edge browser. Now, I have not been a fan of the Edge browser up to this point. And even now, I'm not um, a real big fan. I still prefer Google Chrome. You can see in my last video, I'll link to that later, um, how to set all of Cortana and your search to Google and Chrome. Uh, but this browser is a little different because the actual... Um, code that this browser is built on is uh, Google Chrome. Chromium is the name of it. 
That's what they call it. So the Chromium Edge browser now runs faster. It runs faster than Chrome, not Chrome. It runs faster than Microsoft's original version of Edge. And because it's built into Windows, they claim that it runs faster than Google Chrome now. I don't believe that. And um, every metric will be a little different. Um, and But it does seem to be more seamless than the old Edge was. And it, when you sign in with a Microsoft account, it gives you a lot of preferences and things that you would get for, for instance, in Google Chrome with a Google account. And now, again, the code is different behind this, so it's as secure and as fast, you know, in theory, as Google Chrome. So that's one big difference uh, with the new Microsoft Edge Chromium code browser that is in 21H1. All right, the next thing that the next thing that is actually specific to 21H1 is Windows Hello. And unfortunately, the current um, system that I have will not allow me to use Windows Hello uh, Face because I don't have a camera compatible, you see that there, with Windows Hello Face. It's not um, advanced enough. But the thing is, now with 21H1, if I were to plug in an external camera that was high definition, that was 4K or whatever, um, and it was compatible, it would let me use that camera for my Windows Hello uh, sign-in. So you can use now multiple cameras to sign you in uh, using your Windows Hello face recognition. So uh, that is a nice feature for people that do use that. I don't use he Hello at all. Um, I don't even have a pen set for mine. So, But that's a feature in 21H1 that'll let you do that. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you, and this was um, not new with 21H1, but it's been around a little while, but it is different with Windows 10 for sure um, and the newer versions. And that is trying to create a shortcut from the Start menu onto your desktop. Now, for example, if I go to Start, and let's say I want to create a shortcut uh, to Photoshop onto the desktop, if I right-click in the Start menu here, uh, there is no option for me to create a shortcut to the desktop. I can pin it to the Start menu, but that's really it. I can pin it down to the taskbar at the bottom, but I don't like a lot of icons at the bottom. I want to see this on my desktop. So in order to do that um, in these versions, these newer versions of Windows 10, you have to right click, go to more, and go to open file location first. Then here, the shortcut that you see, you right click it, and then you'll be able to send to desktop create shortcut. And so now I have Photoshop the shortcut on the desktop. So that is the way around that um, in these newer versions of Windows 10. And finally, I want to just talk about the notification center for a second and the action center. So if you click down in the bottom right of Windows and you, you click on the Notification Center icon, uh, you will see that um, the Notification Center blade, that's what they call this thing, a blade when it slides over to the side like that, uh, will show up. And if there's any notifications for Windows or um, even other things, if you have it set to show you other types of notifications, they'll be right here. Now you can click this Manage Notifications in the top right, and it will let you completely turn them off if you want. Um, it'll also let you turn off certain parts of the Notification Center, which I have. Um, and you can modify those settings right here from that Manage Notifications button. Uh, another thing below the Notification Center is the Action Center. Now, the Action Center has been here for a while, of course, but it gets a little more advanced with every update of Windows 10. Uh, for example, in this one, um, we have the, um, the, you have, of course, tablet mode like we had before, but Tablet mode is awesome with a touch screen, um, especially with a two-in-one. You know, you definitely want that feature if you're in a mobile environment, if you're running from place to place, and you want to be able to not worry about the keyboard and just flip it around and use it. Or if you like have something like a Surface tablet, tablet mode's great. You can turn your hotspot on and off here if you have a SIM card in your device. Of course, airplane mode, like always. Nightlight is really cool. I love nightlight because it gives you that um, more soft look to your colors. It takes out the more harsh, bright light, and uh, you know this is like the uh, the feature on the iPhones that recently came out. I think in iOS 13, uh, with the dark mode and with the night mode, where you're able to have those more yellow colors, those sepia tones, and things uh, to be easier on the eyes. So that's nice to be able to just turn that on and off here. The screen snip is awesome. I love doing this. This is like having um, you know some other a third party tool that normally you would have to download. Um, 
And now instead of like snag it or something like that, you can just click screen snip. And then from here, I can just drag whatever I want, create a rectangle, and then it'll copy it. See, there we go. Snip save to the clipboard. And that's in my notification center. So yeah, pretty cool there. Now if I open up paint or something like that, I can just control V and then there's the snip that I just made. So that's really neat down in the action center uh, in 21H1. Uh, the focus assist on and off, I always keep that off. I don't like that. Um, you can turn your VPN on and off if you have one set up. Battery saver mode right here. Um, so this is very nice to have. And then also the brightness, it has the bar there. You can turn that up and down uh, on your screen. And then, uh, of course, if you have notifications up there, you can always click clear all notifications. All right, guys, so that's about it. That's uh, a couple of the newer things. The other updates on 21H1 are really security updates, and they're in the background. You're not going to see them. Uh, they're going to be more of uh, just programmatic, and they're going to protect you and help you and make things more run more run more efficient um, without you even knowing. But uh, that's some of the basic things that they've updated in 21H1. I hope you enjoyed that synopsis. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me. Subscribe for more videos. And if you do want to see uh, what I was talking about earlier and how to redirect Cortana and Windows Search to Google and Google Chrome, check out this video right here. Uh, that I made. It's really cool, really easy to do, um, and it really makes things easier as far as searching through the Windows 10 uh, interface. So that's about it, guys. I appreciate it. This has been Adam with Tech Like a Boss. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next one.